is there a progression of things you need to have in place as that dynamic environment evolves? Do you start out with a load balancer and then you need uh, an API gateway and then you need some sort of egress control and a service mesh? Is there a nice progression that way? Or is it, I hit this tipping point and suddenly I need all of these things and I need them yesterday? I don't. I don't think there's a typical progression per se. And, and this gets into more around who, who needs what. And this is a very popular topic of conversation these days. And it's very easy to go on Twitter and, and, and to learn about all of the different types of technology that one <laughs> might need. And I, I personally take a very pragmatic view on these things, which is I always tell people, you don't need any technology until proven otherwise. And, and so <laughs> to me, the, the question really is, what are the things that are going to prove it otherwise? And that's why, you know, when I'm talking, when I'm talking to organizations, I always tell them, stick, stick with your monolithic architecture, build on the cloud, use the cloud load balancers, right? It's like, if you can get a long way using a, a cloud load balancer with your monolithic application and some cloud database, many uh, companies worth billions of dollars have been started in that simple way. And I, I always chuckle because sometimes these days you see these very small companies or small products that have five or seven developers and they have these incredibly complicated architectures with microservices and service meshes and all these things. And honestly, I just chuckle because it's not it's not a good use of time. These things are not providing business value. So mm. what I always caution people is you always want to pick the simplest technology possible yeah. until there's a clear business reason that you can't do that anymore. And to answer your question specifically, the reason that it usually happens is a human reason. It's not a technical reason. And the mm. human reason being that your organization scales in number of people to a point in which a monolithic simple architecture with a, with, with a single database and a single application and a, and a single load balancer, it typically doesn't scale. And I don't mean technically scale, I mean human scale, meaning right. simply have too many people that are tr trying to get changes into the same thing and you're having problem with deploys. And so when I look at the modern microservice architectures or the modern service oriented architectures, they're really, they're a technical solution to a human problem, but, but many things are, right? I mean, that, that, right. that's just the way that the world works. Yeah. So what I usually tell people is that, you know, bringing on these types of technologies, they're going to yield a lot of pain. I mean, they're just very complicated <laughs> and they have to be replacing enough, like, it has to be um, net pain negative, right? <laughs> Meaning it, it, like it has to be replacing more pain than it's adding. And I think a lot of times people don't think about it that way. They, they view these types of technologies or they look at very successful companies that have hundreds or thousands of engineers who've adopted particular types of deployments. And they say, well, X company has done this, therefore I must need this. And they're not accounting for the fact that those companies companies have people maintaining those systems or they've you know done a ton of engineering to make those make those systems work meaning there's pain that's involved in those systems but they're replacing enough pain that it's worth it and i think people don't think about it that way and that causes the adoption of a lot of technologies that people probably shouldn't 